If you're running Marimo, probably most of the time, you'll be running it on your laptop or on your personal machine. But there are very good reasons not to do that. You could, for example, go for a more powerful machine that has more compute power, maybe also a GPU, or alternatively, uh, I suppose in my case, when I'm recording on a machine like I'm doing right now, then that might take a lot of resources too. So that could be a good reason to maybe split the workload across multiple machines. If you want to set this up in general, odds are you're going to be interested in doing something with SSH and port forwarding. The goal of this video is to just show you how to set that up. And while I am going to start with a GitHub Codespaces demo just to give you an impression of what the experience can be like, I will also start from scratch with a VM and set all the keys up myself so you can repeat these steps for your workloads on your servers as well. All right, so to give a preview of what you could get with an SSH connection, maybe the fastest way to demo that is to use GitHub Codespaces. I'm on a repository right now that I know has a Marimo notebook. What I'm just gonna go ahead and do here is uh, create a new code space. And under the hood, what this is going to do is spin up, I think a VM could also be a Docker container of sorts, but it's gonna boot up a resource from which I could do coding. In this case, I can also open up VS Code. It takes a little bit to start up because it's making a connection and I think it's also booting up the server. But after a bit, it's done. I have a terminal, I have a VS Code experience, and this whole thing is running on some external compute resource. And one thing I could do now is, I think I cannot run UV, yeah, because I need to install it first. Install UV, but with UV installed, now I can now run UVX and I could do something like UVX Marimo edit and you know I could point to a notebook that already exists but now that I think of it I can also just call a file demo.py and I can run it but here comes a crucial thing it's installed and my browser pops open with a link and this is the Marimo experience as I come to expect it I can uh, print hello world here in a cell, right? And everything works. But this is now not running on my machine, which is a little bit counterintuitive at first, because when you look at this, you do think, hey, it's running locally, right? But if I go back to VS Code now, you can see that hey, a port is being forwarded. I actually see a little pop-up appear about that. If you go from the terminal tab to this ports tab over here, you can again see a confirmation about this. You can see that a port is being forwarded and this is all happening on your behalf. And this is also happening securely over SSH. This is a very likable VS Code feature. The really cool thing is that you can still click and drag files in here. You get the native VS Code experience, but in this case, Marimo is definitely running someplace else. And you can see demo.py got created over here. I can see my print hello world appear as well. So there you have it, hello world. We are now running our compute somewhere else. So the machine that I'm on is alleviated from that. And you know, it's a cool feature that you can do this with GitHub and that you can do this with VS Code. That's all uh, fine, but it will be even nicer if we could just do this all from scratch from the command line, because that way you're gonna be able to run this wherever you like. You're not dependent on a third party. So let's set that up right now. All right, so what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the steps to get a similar experience, but running on your own hardware. And also I'm gonna try to do it from scratch. So one thing I'll need in order to connect to another machine somewhere is I need to identify myself. I'm going to skip the cryptography course on how this works exactly, but long story short, what you gotta do is you gotta run the SSH key gen command from the terminal in your SSH folder. And when you do this, you're gonna create two files. So right now you can see that it's asking me to save this into a file. It has a path already. I'm just gonna go ahead and accept that. It already exists, but for the purpose of this video, let's just accept that. This is all well and good because now I can confirm that indeed I've made some files. This file over here is the private one and this is the public one. This is the one that I'm going to share and this is the one that I'm going to keep for myself. And again, long story short, the moment that I share this with a server, the server is able to confirm that if I sent over this private key, then with this public key, it can identify that indeed I'm the one who's making the connection. The person who made these keys is then also the one that can uh, be authenticated, so to say. Now from here, we have to actually create a server and I'm using DigitalOcean for this. You can use whatever cloud provider you like. If you're within the network of a company, then there might be a VM available for you. The main thing that's important when you create your VM on a cloud provider though, is that you can pick all sorts of settings, but the setting that's going to really matter is this SSH one. Different cloud providers handle this differently, but typically there is some sort of a step where you have to upload some sort of an SSH key. And in this case, what you really wanna do is you wanna make sure that you upload the public key so in my case, what you could do is you could do something like, hey, let's cat that public key. Then this is something I can go ahead and copy. And this is something that you would then paste in here. You might be able to give it a name, but you would start up a VM with an SSH key attached. And then later, when you want to actually SSH in, you can use your private key to identify yourself. Now I ran all these steps beforehand. So I've got a VM over here that's currently running. Uh, I have an IP address that I can go ahead and copy. And with that, I can make my SSH command. 
And then this is what the command would look like. This is the IP address in question. Uh, this is the username of that VM. Uh, different cloud providers have different usernames. In this case, it's just a uh, root. And the SSH command that you want to run is SSH and then dash I. Then you provide it with your private key, not your public one. And again, then you have your username and the IP address that you want to go to. And when I now run this, you can see that I'm logged into my Ubuntu machine. And from here, I can do all sorts of stuff. I installed UV, so that's something I can go ahead and use. So I could do something like UVX and then start running Marimo. But in this case, we might want to take a step back instead. Instead, what we want to do is we want to SSH in, but we want to add this extra setting over here. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that port 8080 on that machine is going to be forwarded to port 8080 on this machine. And by doing this, I should be able to run Marimo on the server and then still be able to connect to it from a browser locally. So again, let's just run this command. All very good. I'm back in my machine. I ran SSH. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run Marimo. Uh, I'm using UVX for that, but I'm going to create a foo.py file, but I'm going to tell Marimo to open up a specific port. That's the port 8080 over here that I've also defined over here. So whatever port you pick, uh, just make sure that they uh, align. And I'm also adding the headless flag. What I can now do is I can run it. And now when I go to a browser, and again, I'm going to localhost port 8080, then you can see that it needs an access token, but I am making the connection. If I go back, then you can see the access token over here. This is just something I got to copy. And then I will paste that in. And this should allow me to log in. And wouldn't you know it, this is Marimo running on a VM. So if I start doing heavy compute stuff, that stuff is going to happen on a server somewhere, not on my local machine. So that's great, but we can make the user experience just a little bit better because what I can do is I can actually change the config file in this SSH folder. So I just made some changes to the config file over here. And the main thing I just did is I took all the commands that I would usually type in the terminal and I just added it to a file here. The server has gotten a name over here. We've given it a host name. We also see that we have a user attached and we're also pointing to the right identity file. And on top of that, we are also port forwarding. So we're saying, hey, this port on that machine forward that to this port on this machine. And the thing that's just really convenient about this is now what I can do is I can just do SSH and I can type mar hit tab. It's going to auto complete and it's going to do it in a way that matches this name that I've configured over here. And now I'm in and I can run the same Marimo command again. And when I go to localhost, it's asking for an access token. I can once again copy it and I can once again paste it in and I'm back, which is great. And then finally, another big benefit of configuring that file is that now you can go to VS Code, you can hit this icon at the bottom over here, and then you can say, hey, I want to connect to a host. It is then going to check your configuration file, and in this case, you can see that I can select the Marimo server. I'm just going to tap that. It then takes a small moment, but again, I am in. I'm in a terminal right now, and if I hit the up arrow, you can see that I have the command that I just ran. And a final thing that might be nice to do now is to maybe just make a directory. Let's call it development something like that. And what you can now do is you can tell this VS Code window to open the development folder. And the nice thing about this is that if I start running commands now, then you can also see files appear on the left hand side. So I just said, hey, let's start a new Marimo notebook. When you started from scratch, it's just an empty Python file. I can now go to the browser again, put in my access token, hit login on that one. Let's add a cell here. Let's print hello world. Let's save it. And when I now go back to VS Code, you can see that this file is properly filled in and I can, you know, click and drag data folders in here, whatever, what have you. Uh, but this is nice. This is a SSH connection to a machine that potentially has more resources, which means that I can offload the work from the machine that I've got locally to a machine that's somewhere else. There are a ton of useful use cases for this. One extra thing that's also good to mention, another use case for this could potentially also be coding agents. You typically want to run it in some sort of a sandbox, and you could argue that a VM elsewhere is way less dangerous than, you know, your local machine that might have some more private information on it. But anywho, uh, this is how you could run Marimo over SSH by port forwarding. There are some extra things that you could do from here. Like one thing, if you wanted to, is you could specify no token when you start up Marimo. Uh, this way we don't necessarily ask for the key anymore. And given that it's all running over SSH, that could still be perfectly fine security wise. And you could also choose to maybe run Marimo as a kind of background job, such that it's always on, not when you're just making your first connection or something like that. So there's all sorts of things you can do to the server, but the basis of it is SSH. And if you know just enough about it, you really can make your Marimo experience a whole lot better, especially if you have a big beefy machine somewhere with lots of compute resources.